Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod and I'm so excited today because I get to welcome back to the show somebody I just dearly love. I'm talking about Lisa Ackerman. She's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. She's the founder of an amazing organization called TACA, which is the Autism Community in Action. And she's going to be talking about a lot of different things. They've got some exciting updates. And they've got a month-long conference going on that you guys can be attending. We're going to have her tell us all about that in just a few minutes. I also want to say that we are, this has been an exhaustive month (laughs) this month. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm very fond right now of people will say to me, what about the, and I'm like, it's April. Calm down. Like it's, it's April. We can only handle so much because uh, it, it's a lot, right? Uh, there's so many things to do, and we've been doing uh, as, as much as we can here, uh, and it's not over. So a couple of things that I want you to know about the rest of this week. So today, Lisa Ackerman, hello. Uh, does it get better than that? Tomorrow, we're on the schedule, it says that we're having Dr. Grant Pichet, but if you've been Following closely, last Monday we had to postpone our show with Lillian Carrier. She's that amazing actress that you guys know from Everything's Gonna Be Okay. Uh, she is, and she's a co-founder of something called Ourtism. So we are having her come tomorrow. That will be live tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, Marcy Fibro is joining us. She's a wonderful autism expert. She's going to be talking, she's a BCBA, but she's going to be talking about autism in the school and things that we need to know as parents about getting ready for, you know, the IEP, fighting certain things, what you need to ask for, the assessment you need to ask for to be eligible for a one-to-one aid. Hello. It's going to be great. Then on Thursday, the most incredible Jen Yakos is going to be here with us talking about a lot of different things to help us to help our kiddos. She's an amazing autism expert. Then on Friday, on Friday, we are going to end the week with uh, Abby and Christine Romeo. You guys know them from Love on the Spectrum, the U.S. version. Abby's love story has been so featured in the first two seasons. It's just, it brings a tear to my eye. She is wonderful, talented, hilarious, uh, her mom uh, is going to be talking with us about what it's what it's been like having Abby suddenly be a star and listening to some of the comments that people make and how she is managing that with and for Abby. We're going to talk about mermaids. We're going to talk about Lion King. We're going to talk about Africa. We're going to talk about love and uh, so much more. And hats. Abby makes hats that are super awesome. You should check them out, Hats by Abby. So that is on Friday. Then next week, we just have two days left of the month. On Monday, Vince Redman will be with us. He's an LMFT. He's a regular on the show. And he's going to be talking about dealing with stress that we we all know that as parents of individuals on the spectrum, that statistically we have more stress than the average bear. Um, that's not because of our kids. It's because of all the things we have to go through to be able to support our kids, right? Uh, So Vince is going to give us some helpful information about how we, you and I, manage all of that. And then we'll round out the entire month on that last Tuesday with Dr. Grampiche. The topic for that show will be building language. So that is our month. I'm saying hello to Rodney. Hi, Rodney. So glad you're here. You're going to love Lisa Ackerman. And Helen, same thing. We're so glad that you're here with us. Which brings me to, we're live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You guys can be writing in in real time. You can talk to me. You can talk to Lisa Ackerman. How amazing is that? I uh, want to remind you that this entire show will be available later on in its, in its entirety, like everything else we've done for the last 14 years on YouTube. You can go and watch and listen. Or for many of you, in fact, the vast majority of you listen to us in podcast. And you can do that. It's a free download wherever you get your podcast. We hope that you'll check that out. We do want to remind you that when you download the podcast, there will be advertisements um, because that's how we make it free for you. There is a cost. Every time you download the podcast, there's a cost for it. But uh, we defray that cost for you by having sponsors. So we hope that you'll accept and embrace them. Uh, We also want to let you know if that's, I know some of you have said, you know, I'm a runner and I run and I don't want to 
have to listen. I want to I want to hear the topic. If you want to get the podcast ad free, then you will go to uh, Glow. G L O W. Look at Chris Desmond, how fabulous he is. It's like he reads my mind. Glow.fm slash autism live. And when you go there, you it's a small monthly fee, five dollars. If you want to pay for the whole year, it's even less per month. So here's the cool thing about this. When you go there and you pay that, you get the podcast ad free. But it's not just Autism Live, you get everything the Autism Network does. I think you guys know if you watch the show now that Autism Live is one podcast, and and part of that podcast is that we are incubating other podcasts that eventually we hope will be their own podcasts. We're birthing them. Uh, but we've already birthed, and it's been, you know, there, and it is amazing, Ask Dr. Dream. So it is its own podcast now. Everything is on the Autism Network, but there's Autism Live, Ask Dr. Dream, and a bunch of baby podcasts. Uh, which you, we hope that you guys are tuning in for. I want to say that um, two in particular that we have uh, coming down the pipeline very soon, um, Autismo y Comunidad, all in Espanol, um, and then today's hyperfixation, which we did filming for that last week, and I got myself very excited about that. Uh, it is going to be wonderful. You guys are going to love it. Okay, so that's that about the podcast, but we love it when you guys write in. You know that everything we do here at the Autism Network, our our mission always is to provide information and inspiration. It's just that simple. That's what we do. And people ask us sometimes, but who is it for? Who is your target audience? And we uh, are very fond of letting you know that it is for that larger autism community. Starts with individuals who are on the spectrum themselves, of course, because they are the beating heart of our community, right? But we also include in that community individuals who love people on the spectrum. And we hope that someday that's the whole world, right? We understand that right now, wrongly, it isn't. Uh, but we're working our way towards that. So that's who the show is for, individuals on the spectrum and people who love individuals on the spectrum. That's simple. Um, and that's what we are about. I always like to say, too, that, you know, part of my job on this planet is to be a good ally to people who are on the spectrum uh, because I identify as a pony, a parent of a neurodiverse individual. Those are the words that my son has given me to use to reference who I am in that space. And I love it because it makes me think I have a ponytail, and I don't. Um, but, you know, being a good ally means that we have to listen and, and we have to be willing to sometimes say, okay, I didn't get that right. So the one thing I can promise you is I'm not always going to get it right here, but I'm always – wanting to be in a space where I'm listening, and sometimes I don't even get that right, but working on it, working on it. I like to say that I want to be a student in the classroom, sitting in the front row, raising my hand a lot. That's all. That's all. So um, that's what we're here for. But we, we want to get to our guests, and we're going to do that in just a couple of minutes, but of course we have to start with our jargon du jour, our jargon of the day. Uh, and so today, because we knew that we were going to have our, our wonderful guest, uh, we decided to do biomedical intervention. We're going to let her comment on that because she gave me up to the minute information that I didn't have before. So let's take a look at, uh, biomedical intervention. The actual definition, and we like to give you first the actual definition, and then where we get someplace often we quote, um, and then when appropriate, we make fun of it. When not appropriate, we don't. And then we give you a working definition. So here is our uh, actual definition. Biomedical treatment methods are used to reduce symptoms associated with psychological disorders by targeting specific physiological functions. For the treatment of autism-related symptoms, biomedical interventions target specific processes that impact a person's brain function and development. That's a beautiful definition. I'm just going to admit I don't really know what it means. Uh, so, I mean, it's a lot of words and I just, I mean, I know, I think I know what biomedical intervention is, but I can't quite get a gripster on that, but I love Autism Parenting Magazine. Um, psychological disorders by targeting specific physiological functions. 
See, the functions is where you lose me a little bit. For the treatment of autism-related symptoms, biomedical interventions target specific processes that impact a person's brain function and development. Well, we want uh, brain development uh, to be happening, and we want that to be really wonderful. I remember somebody explaining to me, because I was always asking questions when my son was first diagnosed about, like, you know, what I, w- I was always asking the question, what exactly is autism? And, 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 and how, you know, not so much like the cause of it, but how does it manifest? Like, what does it look like? And I wanted to know what it looked like on a scan. And back in those days, it was pretty early, and they didn't have all the scans. They have many more scans now. But one of the things that somebody described to me, they said, you know, the, their brains are big and beautiful, but sometimes the long-distance connections are there quicker than the local service. And that sort of made sense to me in a weird way. I was like, oh, because my son at two and a half could do things that no two and a half year old could do. But then there were things that should have been easier for him that were just missing, just missing. So anyway, I digress. Let's move on to our working definition. Biomedical intervention, treating the underlying medical issues that may result in behaviors that block communication, socialization, and other important life skills. I really kind of like this because it reminds us that there are underlying medical issues and that sometimes those underlying medical issues can, you know, make it harder for communication, socialization, and other important life skills. I've all, I've been very fond of saying on this show that, um, you know, I'm a visual person, so I like to get a visual metaphor going for almost anything. And I used to picture, my son loved to run when he was little, and I would take him to the track, and, and he would run. But he would always run better if somebody was running with him, and I'm not a runner. Um, but I would watch him run around the track, and I would think about the obstacles that he was facing in his life. And it, it kind of presented itself like hurdles, because I'm looking at the track, that I would see all these hurdles that he was facing. And, and there were other people in other aisles that I saw didn't have as many hurdles. Everybody has hurdles. Everybody. But that my son had many more. And that as a parent, all I wanted to do was to find the way to help him get over, under, around, or, or to pull some of the hurdles out and go, you don't need that one. You don't need that one. Mom's going to take it for you. Um, and, I, and I feel like as a parent, and you guys can write in and tell me, I feel like that there is this thing in our tribe that we are on this mission to see um, which hurdles we can we can help with, and that it's almost like, you know, the the question, the mystery. We just had Thomas McKeon on the other day, but the question, the mystery, is always, you know, why are those hurdles there, and do they have to be there, right? And I do think that, uh, and we're going to listen to Lisa talk because she is oof, amazing brilliant mind, but some of the hurdles don't have to be there. One of the things that I discovered for my son is that if I just removed um, casein and gluten from his diet, that it took hurdles out for him, not for everybody, but for him that allowed him to speak more. And that was an amazing thing. And and I remember my mother being so offended by that and going, you know, is he never going to be able to have ice cream? And, um, and she just was really bummed about that. Is he never going to be able to have ice cream? And I said, Mom, he can have ice cream anytime he wants. Anytime you want him to have ice cream, he can have ice cream. But for him, it might mean that he doesn't talk for two weeks. And, and I remember her face and all these emotions chased themselves across her face. And she was like, really? Is that the thing? And she was like, well, then forget ice cream. Ice cream is just not that important in life. And by the way, um, you know, we were able to have a dairy-free ice cream, and now they sell that everywhere. You can go to 7-Eleven and get a, a dairy-free ice cream. Um, and, um, and he has been able to try uh, a milk ice cream. He doesn't like it as much, i got to be honest. And he also doesn't like how it makes his stomach feel. You know, there are trade-offs in life. And as wonderful as something is, you might go, oh, the trade-off is this and this. I think I'd rather be able to speak. So... Removing those obstacles that are blocking things like communication, socialization, and other important life skills, like being able to go to the bathroom and not have constant diarrhea, you know? I know, TMI. 
but uh, it becomes pretty important. So anyway, I, uh, I want to make sure that we give enough time for Lisa Ackerman. So we're going to go ahead and go to her just a couple of minutes early. So Lisa, on guard, I'm going to start to introduce you. And I blew it. I got up. I got up to go get the stuff and did not bring the stuff in with me. So as much as hard as you worked this morning to get me a bio, and I don't have it because I am useless in the extreme. But let me instead take a minute uh, to talk about Lisa Ackerman, what I know, and then I'll try to find the bio so that I can say what she said uh, later. But I have known Lisa Ackerman for probably, is it like 15 years? Uh, at this point, I see, and I'm going to get misty here, but, um, you know, on that path as a parent, trying to look under every stone, leave no stone unturned to find the answers of how could I remove as many of the hurdles for my son? I heard about first this amazing organization and this amazing woman who had founded it. And, and I was the beneficiary of so many things from Taka over a couple of year time period without having met Lisa Ackerman. And then I had the pleasure of meeting her. And let me just say, if you are not somebody who is, has ever been to the Taka website, which is T-A-C-A now, N-O-W dot org, uh, and you have not participated in any Taka activities, I'm so glad you're here today. Because let me just tell you, today's a life change day. Today's one of those days where you go, okay, it doesn't have to be the way it was, and I get to move on to nicer days. That is what Taka did for me in more ways than I can enumerate. Um, and very early on, and I've shared this many times, but very early on, I was facing a moment where I, it was right after Thanksgiving, and I was looking at our bills for December and our cash on hand. And realizing that I could, I, once I paid the bills, there was not enough money to buy my son a toy, um, buy something for Christmas dinner, um, and buy his medicine that he was taking at that point. And, it, you know, for those of you who've been there, it's a very humbling, humbling moment. And it was right around then that a message popped up um, that was from Taka that said, if there are any families in need this holiday season, please don't be in need. Please let us know so that we can, we have people willing to sponsor people to support you. And it took every bit of, um, like, I really just didn't want to admit that I had messed up this badly in my life that we were at this point. But I had to humble myself because my kid needed his medicine. And so I wrote, and I didn't know that I was writing to Lisa Ackerman at the time. And I said, listen, I don't, I don't need everything else because there were all these things that you could have. I just needed help with the medicine for one month. Um, and, and, oh, gosh, you guys, I'm just a mess now. But what we got w back was so much huger than you can imagine um, because what I got was a, a sense of that there were people who cared. And it's funny that it felt like the most devastating holiday season to me at that time that, um, that we, uh, you know, how can you have the, the Christmas spirit when you have nothing, right? Except it is the Christmas that I remember more than any Christmas because it was the most Christmas beat. You talk about the Christmas spirit and we try every Christmas to pay forward what Taka did for us. That doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. Then I started going to conferences whenever I could. I got to meet Lisa. I, I got so much information and I got hope. And we were on a path to better days. Um, it just, when you say it like that, it just doesn't even encompass everything that this woman has meant to me over the years. So many things that Taka has done um, to help and support all of us. And if you don't know that it's supporting you yet, that's what I love today because today you will know. Today you will go to the website. Today you will find out about this amazing conference that they have going on. You will find about the wonderful things that this woman has been doing for more than 20 years for our community, for the betterment of everyone. So I'm talking about somebody I'm proud to call my friend, Lisa Ackerman. Lisa, I have no idea what you had on your bio, but I've cried all over the place. <laughs> I think I said I'm the dork who started talking. 
Uh, so it wasn't a very good bio. <laughs> uh, um, but I may have used a different word, but uh, yeah, I didn't do a bio. Uh, good, good, because I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it. Uh, uh, Lucy says, "Hi, Shannon. Sending you hugs. Taka is extraordinary. We are blessed to have Taka. We are, and we are blessed to have you. I often talk on the show, Lisa, about the power of one." And that you were just a one woman starting out who said, I, you know, I've got a child, I've got a diagnosis, I can't be alone. And you harness that power of one to, I mean, Taka is this huge thing now. Look what you did. Yeah, well, Dr. Bernard Renlin uh, was the one that said I should get into the Parent uh, Support Arena Autism Research Institute if you don't know anything about Dr. Bernard Rimland, he's the reason why uh, we look at autism as a game over. Uh, it used to be looked at as a game over. Now it's looked at as game on, pardon me. Um, and now that we can help families and that there's potential for caring and serving and getting support for families living with autism, he's the reason I got started. In fact, that's the letter uh, behind me, his last uh, introductory at a Defeat Autism Now conference, which was focused on functional medicine. So. Wow. Anyways. Well, since you bring up functional medicine, because I was telling you yeah. that, uh, that I, w the jargon of the day was going to be biomedical intervention, and you shared some info with me that everybody needs to know. So tell us. Well, I mean, you did a great job. There's no criticism. Uh, <laughs> but the, the challenge that we have is getting uh, Western medicine to accept and love what we do and who we are. And the Institute for Functional Medicine a great resource uh, for providing us training and clinicians, uh, said it's a, pa a patient-centered approach to chronic disease management. Uh, and that's a more acceptable term for people in the Western medicine world. And the reason why we look at chronic disease, uh, Shannon, you nailed it in your introduction, is for um, each person with an autism diagnosis, 95% of these individuals have 4.9 other medical conditions that are chronic. That doesn't mean autism is chronic. That means the health issues are chronic. And what functional medicine is about is really getting to the underlying issues and coming up with solutions for those patients rather than managing the disease it's about resolving so for me it's about like you described for your son if we could just get rid of some of those hurdles whether it be seizures uh, chronic immune uh, dysfunction uh, chronic constipation and diarrhea re reflux or a myriad of other things we just want our kids to have a chance at an independent healthy life amen but you're being very nice about, um, you know, I was using the term biomedical intervention, and you were sharing with me that now the term that everybody is embracing is functional medicine. Yeah, functional medicine is just something that our medical community seems to can wrap their hands around it and have a better look at if we identify that autism has been well studied in the medical side that they have 4.9 on average chronic issues, they need someone who's an expert in each particular arena. Uh, so we, that's why we look to doctors that are willing to look. It's not a five minute well baby checkup appointment. Uh, most often these appointments are 45 minutes to an hour and a half long. So we really want people to have access to quality health care. It's one of the things we're funding scholarships right now. Uh, those will be open up this week uh, for functional medical scholarships. So those are available on the Taka Now website. I recommend that you get in there and you apply. Um, but we are doing those at least two times a year, some scholarship uh, rounds for functional medicine support. Which is absolutely amazing. I, don't, I honestly don't know how you do everything that you do. And we're going to get into talking about some of those it's things. It's a team. You know, you say and I know it's that. Me. It's really this team. We, we couldn't do it without the incredible team. There's 28 of us, uh, 571 volunteers. Um, and we're really blessed to have every team member, every volunteer for what they do for TACA. And they're it's all amazing. Human. They are They're all, all amazing. They are. They, they are. tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you don't get there without a leader. So I'm just saying. But um, 
I, you know, I want to make sure, you know, she just gave you guys amazing information that if, if, if money uh, is getting in the way of you getting the functional uh, medicine, which for most of us it is, that there are scholarships, you need to go to the website, tacanow.org. And if you feel funny about applying for a scholarship, I want to remind you that I am the recipient, uh, the proud recipient. Um, so anyway, so go and apply. But let's start talking about a couple of things because I know this time is going to go by really yeah. fast, way too fast. Right now, you have something amazing that's happening. Give us all the 411 so that people know how they can p- be participating in this virtual conference. Yeah, we, um, it's our 40th conference since we started TACA in 2000. Uh, and this month is virtual. Um, we have some live events. It's the last week with our live events, but there are some amazing recordings uh, that will be available. So it's the last week to register, um, and you'll have access to all the recordings through May 31st. It's Take Action Conference. Uh, and I'm just so proud of the team and the great speakers and volunteers that are working so hard to help provide families everything they need to navigate their autism journey. Um, And we're here today. Uh, Shannon, you're going to give away five uh, free registrations uh, to anyone that you'd like to do. We'll give you a user login and uh, password for each of those five uh, people. If they can just comment something about Autism Live and how Autism Live has helped your family in the comments, Shannon will be the lucky picker for okay. who gets those passwords. All and, right. Um, and anyone who's not lucky, you can take care of that and register. We're also, of course, offering scholarships for families in need. And, and let's also say it's very affordable. You guys don't do yeah. anything that it's not affordable. It's, yeah. like, it's like 35 bucks. $35, $35. Yeah. to be able to watch. Now, you could have done it earlier in the month, but now you still get mm-hmm. a week long of the live, and you get to have the videos of everything, everything. you've already missed until, like, May 31st, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So, so we, we pride ourselves on the cheapest conference for families. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And uh, so right now we're going to start, and the first five people who write in with a comment about, uh, you know, how Autism Live, about Taka, and uh, go ahead and, and, and write in, and, and we'll hook you up with a free scholarship for that starting now. So that's very generous of you. I didn't realize that we were going to do that. And don't forget. Yeah. Even if you're like, oh, man, I would do it, but this week is really busy, you have the videos for all of them. And you don't have to be a hero. Listen, you don't have to watch all of them, but if you watch one of them and it changes what you're doing and it removes a hurdle from what you are doing for yourself or for your child, oh, my gosh, how worth it would it be for that? Uh, So Alicia already wrote in and said, TACA conferences are the best. So Alicia is the first recipient of a scholarship. Yay, Alicia. Um, so feel free to write in, you guys. And and if you know somebody who really is like, oh, I would like to be able to do that, I couldn't afford the $35, your first thing is to write in right now, or they can apply for a scholarship. I love how you guys make it very, very possible. Uh, so feel free to write in right now. Um, do you want to share any, uh, any of the speakers yeah. that are this week that uh, help them to know, like, what are they missing out on this week? Oh, well, that's a great question. Of course, I don't have that up, but it'll take me two seconds to get okay. that. Um, we're just excited to be able to offer um, the support across a variety of topics, and the topics are just everything that you would want to learn about autism and then some. Well, you guys uh, get So it's over 20 else. lectures. Yes, it's um, amazing. And we have, gosh, Dr. Rosignol, Dr. Anju Usman, uh, Brian Hauser is talking about seizures. Uh, Mo Langley did a great talk, uh, talk at, on um, uh, siblings and autism. Gosh, it was so heartwarming. Uh, Leanne Shouten did a great on Gestalt learning. Uh, gosh, it's so great. And oh, one of my heroes, Michelle Del Rosario, did a great talk on augmentative and alternative communication strategies, everything in the kitchen sink and getting kids who are pre-verbal and non-verbal how to speak. There's just a variety of great uh, lectures okay. um, that are available that are really uh, something that's going to help you and your family right away. 
Okay, so we still have four more of those uh, free passes for this. If you guys write in right now, write something mm-hmm. about and uh, autism journey with Elijah. I saw you wrote in before, but it was before we started the thing. Same thing with Lucy. So write in if you want that free, the the free ticket for that. Uh, you also have when I was there at the conference in the fall, you had a special edition, but now you have a newer edition. Of, mm-hmm. uh, of something really amazing. Can you show us on camera what it looks yeah. like? Yeah. Um, we have our new autism workbook. It's geared up for uh, helping parents how to navigate the autism journey. I love it because it's very graphical Oof. and pleasing. Um, it gives people some sage advice on what to do. Um, the, the, the part that I find the best is... It takes some very complex medical, therapeutic, and other issues and really breaks it down. Um, Since we always talk about poop, PMI, uh, we talk about the issue, the symptoms, testing, and treatments that you can do. And then the QR code up at the top allows you uh, to go in and read further. But we try to make it very easy to navigate um, if you want to go and look at the science or more in depth in the topic, it's in a companion to the website, but it just really allows uh, people to check one item at a time. So we talked a little bit about food. Um, there are some great checklists that walk you through downloadable checklists for every aspect, including the therapeutics, uh, medical. There's also a teen and adult and home life section. So I'm just, I'm thrilled this team has done an incredible job uh, to make navigating the autism journey so much easier. Um, These are free at TACA events because it costs so much for shipping, Um, but we give them out for free when you join us and register for any of the in-person events across the United States. But don't fret if you don't have an in-person event near you. You can order one. We have a special this month uh, month for $36, Autism Action Month. Uh, you go for the Take a Home Code um, AAM for Autism Action Month, and you can get this shipped to you. And, of course, it's another thing we have scholarships for. For If you have any challenges, we're here to support you. It's an amazing, and I've only seen the the one before the there were changes, and it was amazing. So if it's been made better, I can't even imagine. Um, yeah, my favorite page is this. Presume, presume confidence. confidence. Yeah, and uh, empower, listen, and respect. All the different strategies and how you uh, can help presume confidence and help your person uh, does you know dealing with autism in the journey and uh, navigate to independence and good health. Absolutely amazing. And uh, I can't think of a single thing that would be more helpful and supportive on your journey to help you get into action. And I know that this is something that's super important to you, that action piece, uh, Mm -hmm. Lisa, that Uh, You know, I was talking the other day about the fact that I used to refer to myself as the amazing paralyzed woman, that I would hear something, somebody would say, and sometimes it was you, (laughs) that there was a period of time when I was talking to you and I remember you were suggesting to me after having met my son and asking me some questions, you asked me, had we ever tried the methyl B12 shots? And I said, no, I kind of want to, and our doctor is recommending it, but I haven't. And I remember you asking me what I was waiting for, like what, what was in my way? What was I waiting for? And I was like, I don't know. I just, you walked me over <laughs> to the place where I could practice the shot. Cause I think you were thinking that it was, I was afraid of the shot and, and I could practice, uh, in the little chicken cutlets, uh, giving the shot. Uh, and you were kind of prompting me. And then finally you said to me, here's what I think, Shannon, I think sometime you are going to start doing the shot and you are going to kick yourself that you didn't do it sooner. And I think part of it was that I just, I just didn't know. What are you sorry? That was like amazing because that was the thing that got me that I was like, Oh, what if she's right? What if later on I go, why didn't we do this sooner? And that got me unstuck. 
That got me unstuck and I took the action. But you also sat with me and said, what would I, what would I need in order to take action? You are about getting people unstuck. And this workbook is really to help you to plan a course of action and have a place where you can think it through and decide what is important for you. Um, and, and here's, I want to be clear that you knew that my doctor had already recommended it, that it was already doc, doctor recommended for my child. And you knew that I wanted to do it, but that I was stuck. And I think we all get a little stuck sometimes. And I see that you are constantly thinking and trying new things and creating things to help people like me get unstuck. And that's what I thought when I saw that workbook. I was like, look at Lisa trying to get more people unstuck. Well, the, the previous was our autism uh, journey guide, and we have over 50,000 of them out there right now. Uh, and it was so beautiful and wonderful, but very text heavy. And this great team said, not everyone can read like we like to read, Lisa. We've got to, you know, create the case for what can be done to support an individual facing autism and uh, make it easy for that uh, caregiver and parent to navigate their next steps. And then provide for all the nerds out there additional reading and science as needed. Yes. And it just makes it so much easier to do it in that way. And uh, for families, they can just jumpstart their journey. Well, and I always say that your website <laughs> is uh, your website is the best website for people looking for information. Whenever I'm talking to a parent and they're like, well, I just don't need, you know, because the Internet is huge and the Internet is filled with things that uh, can take you down a rabbit hole and some of it isn't reliable, um, but everything that you put, uh, like I, I love when you blog and you, everything goes back to, um, you, sh you footnote the science, um, and your website is the most comprehensive. So I send people to your website all the time, um, and say, start there, but don't, don't let yourself, because it would take more days than it would take to get through Disneyland to get through your whole website start to finish, right? So I say yeah, people, there's over 300 articles now, and I think we've updated or added 150 in yeah. the last, since COVID. It's a lot. Uh, so there's a lot up there. Not not everything is needed for every family, so don't get daunted you yeah. know, by the number of articles. Just start in the section if you're newly diagnosed or you've got a teen, an adult with autism. Start at the top. Work your way down. It's it's a self-guided journey that, uh, and, and Shannon, to kind of tag into what you're saying, everyone needs a moving buddy. Remember Woody? Yes. Toy Story? Yes. I was just your, your Woody. Yes, day, you were. You know, helping you find a moving buddy and uh, helping you along. And it's my pleasure to do that. Well, that brings up your Taka mentors. And I know that your Taka mentors have been going through a little bit of a, a, a training ritual. this month. A what? They're going through training this month. We've um, we're, we've updated all our training. So we um, attract TACA families. We train insurance and manage. And uh, while parents are getting educated in the Take Action uh, Autism uh, Series, this virtual conference this month, we're taking all of our volunteer mentors and training them to get them the latest and greatest and all the tools they need. And uh, people can sign up for a reservation for a talk a mentor coming up in May. Uh, but just God bless these people. These are your moving buddies. Yes. There's a bunch of woodies out there. And you know, here's the good Toy Story model. I, I like him. I love it. Um, and here's the thing. So much of what you, you know, you try really, I see it all the time. You try really hard to make everything as cost effective as, as, and as accessible as it can. But there are always um, scholarships available when people can't. People um, need to understand the mentors are free, correct? Correct. Correct. Um, yeah, everything what we do here at TACA is free. Um, and where there is a fee, which is a very small percentage, about 5% of what we do, uh, there will always be a scholarship. So TACA has a very important free model, kind of like what Autism Live does. Uh, you can listen free live, and there's a, you know, an advertising version that helps support. 
uh, every nonprofit, including what Autism Live is doing, has to find a way to pay for things. Um, and we're always grateful for the support we receive. Uh, but just know there are things that you have available for free. And when there is a fee, there is always a scholarship that will continue uh, until we're no longer needed. And that is amazing. Uh, I'm just looking because I'm my thing is stuck. So you guys might be writing in comments and I'm not seeing, especially I'm only seeing from Facebook. I don't know, Chris, if you're able to see, because we put out this thing and said the first five people. If, if I will take care of it. We will take care of it. Uh, and if, and if, I, if need be, I will look later and look at the time codes. If people are writing in on YouTube, I just want people to know why I'm not re responding back because my thing is, I think, frozen. Uh, of course, the minute you said uh, giving away in comments, my thing gets frozen. Uh, but we still have four of those passes left that Lisa is... Uh, so generously offering. So you can write in, write something about TACA and what TACA means to you. And we're going to give those timestamp to the first five, even if I can't see it right now. Um, <clears throat> but Lisa, you, there is a thing, um, and you may have just been saying it, but you, you, we, you want people to register and become a TACA member. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's free to become a TACA member. Okay. And then you'll get um, you'll get the information that you need for your local area or virtual meetings uh, that just connects you to community, whether it be online or in person. And you do several different things um, throughout the year. In April, um, you guys have been doing this wonderful virtual conference that lasts all April. Um, I did I just see the other day that your your family uh, fun day the, the the, is it a picnic? What do, you, what do you call it? Well, this um, Saturday, it's sold out, so it's kind of a bummer mentioning it. Sorry, it's an autism take action jump for autism where we have all the kids going to Sky Zone here locally. Oh. But we had 25 events across the United States last year, and we're going to continue to do those important gatherings. So check the TACA website and the event page for the different things that are happening in your community. Okay, and then you have the, the the other conference is in the fall, and that's an in-person conference. In-person. So, and that's, yeah, April that's in October. Virtual. Correct. April's virtual. October is our in-person, and we're at the Orange County Hilton in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, we're so grateful because Regional Center uh, sponsors a lot of uh, clients in California. And last year we had uh, people fly in from 34 states. Uh, we would love to see families there. There's nothing like a TACA conference. And amen to that. That is the truth. Over the years, when we've had you on the show and you've been so generous and given scholarships uh, for tickets, uh, I I have been uh, grateful to have the opportunity to pay for a couple of scholarships myself and would like to keep doing that in the future. I know that every time we send someone to a TACA conference, they say the same thing. They come back and they say, Shannon, it was life-changing. And I know that because so many, I felt that and so many other people have said that. And by the way, that's virtual as well. Um, so I just want to remind everybody, there's so many good things about attending a, a TACA conference, the information that you're going to get. And, and the virtual is great because you get to be in your fuzzy slippers and do the whole thing, but nothing is like being there in person to feel the excitement and to see how many people that are there with you to know that you're not alone um, and to be there for the resource fair and all of that. Uh, there's nothing quite like it. There is a buzz. There's a hum. There's an excitement when people are there that is hope. It is totally hope. You will get your batteries recharged. You will get so much information that you will be afraid that you're about to be overwhelmed, but Taka has you on that, and they will not allow you to get overwhelmed. They sit you down before you leave the conference and make sure that you are leaving with a plan of action that is designed by you with the help of the people there. I think that's one of, one of the best things that you do, because I, I know so often I go to a conference and I go, Oh, it was great. And I come back and nothing changes. I have well, never. We, we're planning, we plan you out. Um, yeah. It's so important. Sorry, Shannon. Highly caffeinated, so I stepped on you. I didn't mean to. No. no. Um, we plan your steps. There's a whole 
take action series at the end uh, or part of every day that summarizes the morning and the afternoon conference sessions. And we're telling you based on um, the input from that day and those questions, we're helping you navigate your take home worksheet so you can prioritize by area um, what you're going to do when you get home and how you're going to take that information and navigate the steps forward to an independent, healthy life for your loved one. Amazing. Lucy has written in and said, I would love a Taka pass. Taka is awesome. And you get a pass, Lucy. Uh, You're Oprah today. Look at you. I know. That's exactly who I was channeling, too. Thank you for noticing. And you get a pass. Um, so if you want to pass, uh, write in right now, because apparently my thing is unstuck again for a moment. So write in right now. Tell us uh, something you love about Taka. And uh, we still have three left, so let's make sure we have that. Uh, okay, we've got a few minutes, Lisa, and we had promised mm -hmm. all month long that we were going to have you come on and talk, update us uh, about Taka, but also give us trends. Are we are we fully updated on Taka? Is there anything else? Because you have so many things that you do. Is there anything yeah, else? No, you're updated on Taka. The autism workbooks and the Take Action conference series are the most important thing, and you know, our whole goal is just helping families and caretakers navigate their autism journey so they have the best possible outcome. Um, I, I guess it, it would be nice to talk about Dr. Walter Zaharadny um, from Rutgers University and his work on the CDC autism prevalence. Yeah. Uh, there's so much going on in that, and we can probably cover off on a couple of things there. You know what a geek I am. And I love that because I get to a point where I, I go, Zzz. And I can't anymore, but you, you know, you're so great because you mine the stuff that's vital and important that we need to yeah. be talking about. So yeah, go yeah. for it. Well, I mean, it, it's hard because there, currently there's no autism census, you know, they don't count every person with autism and that still bothers my core yeah. that we don't care enough to count. Uh, but what we do have uh, since 2000 uh, a very detailed, methodical look at the autism prevalence. And um, the stats that I have in front of me, it's basically the 2020 survey was released in 2023 last year. Um, it was um, based on eight-year-olds born in 2012. Um, the national stat is one in 36 U.S. children have autism. And here's the important takeaways. It's a 317% increase since they started the survey. Um, and it's an 18% increase since the two-year survey previously released in 2021. Um, 11 states are reporting, including California. Uh, the thing that really hit me the hardest, uh, not that's about me, but in California, it's one in 22 four-year-olds yeah. have an autism diagnosis. That's 7% of all boys in the state of California. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it still hurts. It still hurts. Yeah, uh, thirty-seven point nine percent of children are classified with an intellectual disability. That's up from the previous survey at twenty-seven percent. Uh, Four percent of boys, one percent of girls on a national level. Um, and the data is it's really important. In December twenty thirteen, they changed how autism is diagnosed using the diagnostic or uh, the DSM five for short. Um, DSM-5 looks at all um, issues involving mental and quality issues. Um, uh, Dr. Grant Fichet could go into more details on that. I won't <laughs> take that time. Uh, but that criteria in December 2013 got more exclusive, not inclusive. Yeah. They re removed PDD-NOS. They removed Asperger's and came up with the diagnostic criteria of autism level 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so uh, a lot of people talk about, and I'm almost done with my diatribe, I apologize, um, that we're just better at diagnosing or broadening the criteria. There's no scientific research on those two statements whatsoever. Uh, they're just, um, what I'd like to say, excuses, excuses with no basis. Yeah. There's a high increase of autism. It's an epidemic. And the next survey will be out in March 2025. So there's your... There's your news reporting on autism prevalence. Yeah, thank you for that because, you know, here we are in April and everybody was asking me, so do we have new numbers this year? And I was like, what? No, it doesn't come out every year. 
Uh, but mean? they were asking me when the next one, and I honestly couldn't tell them. But you're telling us March 2025. So that's we, the estimate. Yeah. yeah. So I need to mark the calendar for that. Um, but I, I want to go back to the California numbers for just a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one in 22 in California. Mm-hmm. Do we, and uh, do we, do you, and the people that you talk to, do we think that that's because there's something going on in California, or do we think that we are we are better di- at diagnosing in California, and that it is more indicative of what it actually is in the country, um, or where do you fall on that, Lisa? Now, I'm, I'm going to interview the survey group in San Diego that did the California piece. And again, um, the, the four-year-old number and the four-year-old tracking is relatively new to the CDC tracking number. Um, I just think when you have a higher denser population area like San Diego where the survey was done yeah. and what the numbers are sharing, and again, I'm interpreting the numbers Um, You have a lot more people than, let's say, rural areas, and one of the areas was Utah, which had a lower number. That's not as highly density density in population as the San Diego Regional Center that is doing the work. So I I feel like population density just brings more kids forward. Um, But again, um, they're looking into more of the numbers, and we'll release another study, and we'll see if that trend continues. Uh, But I know, Shannon, if you and I locked arms and went to 10 school sites today and uh, talked to every principal or any long-timer at 10 different school sites, uh, we would ask one question, do you see a higher rate of incidence of autism? And they would be screaming at the top of their lungs, yes. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, and as you said, since, you know, since we're not counting, you know, um, I was in a discussion the other day about uh, the homeless I- issue currently and somebody saying, I wish that we had data on how many of those people are on the autism spectrum. So um, I, you know, yeah, so do I, um, they don't necessarily, they say uh, for a lot of, um, again, I don't know the statistics and I don't want to offend anyone who's navigating a very complicated topic like homelessness. Yeah. Um, when they look at mental health, there's definitely, um, you know, a percentage of individuals who are homeless that have that, but I don't know if they're identifying what level um, uh, or what condition they have. Uh, so it would be intriguing to me uh, to understand more about um, people who are homeless. We have been contacted at TACA for people who are homeless. The number one thing they can do is uh, contact in California, the regional centers, or in any state, the Department of Disabilities. There is support services for anyone, any age, um, who's navigating autism and either homelessness or their family is navigating. There are support tools in place for families. I want to give a shout out to Christina Adams, who's joined us, and she says one in 22 four-year-olds in California. That's tragic for humanity. Uh, Absolutely. Uh We love Christina Adams, author of A Real Boy and and Camel Crazy. Love love her. Uh, Lucy would like to know where is the data from 1 in 22. They'd like to be able to find that. It's very easy. You go to the Takanow website, T-A-C-A-N-O-W.org, and there's an About Autism page. And the prevalence surveys are all there. Uh, you can pull the surveys, and it has all of the California statistics, as well as each of the individual 11 survey sites. So, yeah, 1 in 22 four-year-olds, 7% of all boys. Um, it is a level of concern. We also just did an interview of my hero, Dr. Walter Zaharadny, from Rutgers, who's the principal investigator behind the CDC number. Um, He is one of my heroes, just very dedicated and diligent at looking at the autism diagnostics. Uh, That's on the Taka Now blog. Uh, You can go and look at that. It's a podcast interview also available on our YouTube channel. So find it and take a look. His... um, his dedication to looking at these numbers is something to marvel at, and I am so grateful for him and his team and what they do to count uh, and survey the number. Amazing. 
uh, Christina gave a shout out back to you, Lisa. She said, hey, Lisa. She also said, my special education teacher friend says her students are more aggressive than ever before in 30 years. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure that that is absolutely true. For those of you who are just joining us, uh, we're here with Lisa Ackerman, founder of Taka. They're in the middle of a wonderful virtual uh conference, seminar, webinar, I don't know what you, what, what words are you using to describe it? It's a take action, uh, take action conference series, virtual all month of April, recorded access to the end of May, and we can't wait to see you there. And we still have three scholarships. These are tickets um, that you can have if you write in something uh, about TACA uh, on whatever platform you're in. We still have three of them left. It gets you the live from this last week, but the recordings all the way through May 31st, it's uh, it's a $35 value, but it's like, it's actually much more than that. Uh, yeah. they, they make sure that they make it affordable for everybody. If you want to go buy one, it's $35, but it's, you know, if you were to go to a conference for every one of those 20 speakers, you would be in the, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So saying it's a $35 value is, is kind of wrong. But you can write in on whatever platform you're in right now, uh, and I still have three of those left, so feel free to write in. Uh, what else is going on? in Because we've got like a minute and a half more. Uh, Lisa, anything else that you need to report on for people um, to know in terms of autism trends? Well, I just, you know, there's about 50 to 100 new abstracts coming out each week on uh, therapeutics treatments and potential causes. I want any family that's navigating the autism journey to know there's a lot of new science, uh, especially in what the topic uh, today in biomedical or functional medicine. If you haven't been to a functional medicine specialist for kids with autism in a while, it's worth taking a look at. There's so many new treatments uh, and tests that are available that could make a huge difference to your family. So never say never. There's always steps forward, and there's always a way and a path to get healthier. Lisa, I just love and respect you more than I think you will ever know um, for what you have done. And, you know, it's funny. One of the things that we talk about a lot lately, because uh, some of us are getting to a certain age, we talk about legacy. Uh, what what do you want to leave people with? And I I can't begin to know what your plan was in the beginning, but let me just tell you, your legacy is large. I had uh, zero plan in the beginning. <laughs> uh, sometimes you don't get to pick what you are when you grow up. It picks Amen. you, and I love these kids more than life, man. I just want them to have the best chance. And for people to know their gifts and the people to love and respect them. But it's got to be amazing. Uh, you know, I was at the Taka conference in the fall and uh, Temple Grandin was your keynote speaker. <laughs> and there were all, I know, how amazing. And uh, there were all these people waiting to get into this mammoth ballroom. And there were people there, some of them with their kids. Uh, yeah. And there was just a sea of humanity. And I, I looked, I looked at it for a second, and I was like, "Gosh, I wonder where Lisa is, and I wonder if she's taken a moment to look at this and go, uh, I made this happen." Now I know you're going to say you had a whole lot of help in doing it, but still, but still, like if you hadn't built it, there would be no place to come. So I thank you. I know that our viewers uh, are the beneficiaries of everything that you guys do. Uh, and Christina, we're giving you a free pass because Christina said you've done a great job. I'm counting that as a talking. Christina, you now have a free pass to those uh, <laughs> those things, uh, to all the recordings and the. So I still have two left. You guys, you could be writing in right now if you want one of the free passes. But Lisa, thank you for everything that you do and everything that you continue to do. And I, you know, uh, we'll keep saying thank you forever. Well, I love what you guys do, and it's a team effort to make it all happen from this team and what Autism Life does as well. It gives us a platform to help drive families uh, to hope and a path for the future. So we'll be back uh, in next year uh, to talk about those numbers. Yeah, I have well, no idea what they will be. We'll uh, have you on this Whatever summer. the answers are, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll have you on this summer to talk about the fall conference and uh, – 
we're doing things a little bit different in terms of scheduling, so it's going to get easier. Uh, so there we go. Anyway. It's all good. Hopefully, you know, uh, Shannon, we'd love to have Autism Live there as our roving reporter, if you can be there. Okay. Um, we'd love to Put see it on the you. Calendar. And, yeah, just uh, looking forward to it. It's October 18th through 20th. Uh, okay. Uh, and, and Costa Mesa, and we'll be opening up our, our who our keynote and uh, registration is uh, later in June. Okay. We'll consult with Chris, because I can't do anything without Chris. Uh, it's about Chris. it's about Chris's schedule more than about mine because I'm just the idiot holding the microphone and it doesn't get out to the world unless Chris is there. So that's that's how I uh, said my bio was I'm the idiot that started talking. No, you are, you are the brilliant power of <laughs> so, one multiplying. All right, you guys, uh, it's all the time we have for today. But Lisa, thank you so much for being with us. We love you and we love Taka. Everybody, don't forget this week is amazing. Tomorrow, Lillian Carrier's with us. On Wednesday, Marcy Fibro talking about autism in school. On Thursday, Jen Yakos talking about strategies that are important to us today. And then on Friday, Christine and Abby Romeo from Love on the Spectrum USA. It's a big, big week. We're rounding the corner to the end of the month. Keep writing in so that you can win one of the – I have two passes left. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everyone. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.